page 144. All right. Okay, folks, we're looking at non-proportional relationships now, okay, and how to write equations for non-proportional relationships. Hey, the equation of a line that represents a non-proportional relationship can be written in what we are calling slope-intercept form, okay, y equals mx plus b. That's right. M is still the slope, and this letter b represents that thing in 2, 8 called the y-intercept. Now, what is the equation of a line for a non-proportional relationship? Folks, we just read it. Y equals mx plus b. There it is. That's the equation. M, this is your slope. You know how to find slope. This here is your y-intercept. Okay? There's your equation. All Good right. work. That was easy. I like this stuff. Number two, the donations by a restaurant to a certain charity, Y, will be two-fifths of its profits, X, plus 50 bucks. How can you determine the equation in slope-intercept form that shows the relationship between X and Y without graphing the line? Hey, it's time to go home. Yes. Woo! Well, folks, we first have to find the slope. Well, does it give us a slope? Does it give us our rate of change? Yes. It does. It says it's two-fifths of its profits. Now, they say profits is going to be the letter X. Does it, does it, does it, does it give us our starting point or what we're calling the Y-intercept? Yes. Yeah. Hey, we are starting off with 50 bucks. So, write the equation. Huh. Y equals, put the slope here, two-fifths times X. And then we got to add on our 50 bucks. We just wrote the equation of that non-proportional situation. Why is it non-proportional? Because it starts somewhere other than zero. It starts up there at 50. Okay, down there at the bottom, Lance Long, come on in, man. Join the video. We're, we're making some videos. Come on in, Lance. You say hi to the video. camera, Lance. Hi. Yeah, you hand that. Are you done, buddy? Yes. That's my man. See you tomorrow, buddy. Priya. Priya. Priya? Priya. What Priya. is it? Priya. Priya. Yeah. We'll graph a line with the equation. Okay. She wants to know what the line will look like before she graphs the line. Describe the line Priya will draw, including the quadrants the line will pass through. Oh, man. That's a doozy. Well, I'm going to say the line will increase from left to right. Okay, guys, think about what kind of slope it has. Positive well, or negative? At that slope, that is a positive slope. It's a slope of three-fourths, which means it's going to rise three and run four. It's going up from left to right. It's increasing from left to right. I also know it's going to start where? Negative it four. Cross the y-axis at negative 4. Okay? There's my minus 4. It's crossing the y-axis at negative 4. Now, it also wants to know which quadrants it's going to pass through. Now, folks, here's your coordinate plane. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Okay? This line, remember, crosses down here at negative 4. And it's increasing from left to right. Well, which quadrants is that going through? 1, one 3, 4. That's it. Nice job, Mr. Noel. Thank you. I, I, I had to ask Jilly for help on that one. Chrissy says the equation of line shown on a graph is y equals 1 half x minus 5. George says that the equation of the line is y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. Which student is correct? Well, folks, let's start by comparing slopes. Positive slope, this one negative slope. Is that slope going up or down? Jilly, line going up or down? 
Line going down, can it be a positive slope? No. Who's right? George. George. Why? Because he is. Because his equation has a negative slope. And that line is decreasing from left to right. Now, you may be thinking, I was thinking of it different. Okay, because I know Mr. Fricky was thinking differently. Were you thinking differently, Mr. Fricky? Nope. No? Oh. I thought maybe you looked at the y-intercept. Okay? Chrissy said the y-intercept is negative 5. Does this line right here cross below the origin? No. No, it doesn't. No. So, once again, George is correct. His line has the plus 5. Boom. There's your y-intercept, five units above the y-axis. George is still right then? George is still right. Chrissy's not right at all. No, she did terrible. Okay, number five. Uh, this person wants to rent a tent for an outdoor celebration. The cost of the tent is $500 per hour. Per hour. Plus a $100 setup fee. Draw a line to show the relationship between x and y. Uh, the number of, tent, or number of hours the tent is rented and the total cost. Okay. So guys, th hey, think about which number represents slope, which one is my starting quantity. Well, I think if I have to pay 500 bucks per hour, that's kind of my rate of change. Every hour I'm paying $500 more, so this has got to be my y-intercept. Yep. Okay, 100. I'm going to make a point right there at 100. Now, folks, as I go over one hour, how much does my cost increase? You got it, five hundred bucks, people. So if I go over one, I go up five hundred. That takes me up to six hundred. Damn, that's pretty steep. I wonder why that's so steep. Because the rate of change is pretty high. It is a pretty big number, <laughs> folks. Okay, so letter B says, what is the equation of the line? Well, to write our equation, y equals m x plus b. What's going here for the m? Well, that's slope. Your slope. What did we determine our slope was? Well, we went up 500 for every hour. Huh. Slope, 500. B. <coughs> B. B. Where does this line cross the y-axis? Jill it? Uh, I don't know. Well, what what's number? between 0 and 200? 100. 100. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Your equation, y equals 500x plus 100. Okay, that was page 144, key concepts. For lesson 2.9, writing slope-intercept form equations.